Introducing the all-new Seiko Presage GMT SSK009, a 1960s icon reimagined. And yes, Seiko did reimagine it incorrectly because it used to be a chronograph, reference 45899 which was such a significant watch for Seiko. It was their first ever chronograph and it was released in 1964 for the Tokyo Olympics. And its fame is right up there with 62 MAS and Willard in my opinion. However, Seiko's treatment of the crown chronograph has fallen short of its true potential. Its reintroduction in, I think, 2021 as a standard three-hander with a date felt like a missed opportunity. But with this latest iteration and the addition of the GMT complication, it's kind of refreshing. And maybe this time around, the watch has found its stride. While we may never see a revival of the slim mono pusher chronograph that defined its generation, I must admit this GMT variant is simply stunning. This case has simple brushing on the top with high polished sides. And the lugs extend rather abruptly from the mid case, which gives you that vintage charm. Overall, I'm getting a standard impression of quality. The finish simply doesn't match one of the older models, the SARX 073. And unlike the 073, which has a bi directional bezel, this one is stationary. The insert is a 24 hour scale, two tone, and it's made from anodized aluminum. Seiko is using black to depict the nighttime and brownish taupe for the day. Now let's do those dimensions. I got 40.8 millimeters in diameter, a secret measurement of 33, that's the sapphire, and a thickness of 13 even, including that boxed crystal. And we got drilled lugs for easy strap changes and a lug to lug of 47 millimeters. And take note, even with that boxed hard lex, it still manages to come in at 0.6 millimeters thinner than the brand new Alpinist GMT, which has a flat crystal. So overall, it wears much thinner than that new Alpinist, but you guys be the judge on the faraway shots and let me know how it wears. And let me just backtrack for a second because I just glossed over the biggest negative. It's of course the Hardlex crystal. If Seiko just put a box sapphire in this, it would probably become a top seller. It's 2024 and the people are done with Hardlex. Seiko, you need to wake up. Let's quickly take a look at that loom. It's not the greatest and it's not meant to be. We have tiny loom plots on the inner sector and some decent loom on the hands. This watch is also equipped with a pretty pointless hard lex display case back. All it does is add some height and shows you a rudimentary basic movement. I think they should have skipped it for a thinner profile. But what about some good news? Well, you guys always ask for it and Seiko delivered here. We have a signed Seiko S on that crown. It is tiny at five millimeter and it's only a push pull, which helps give this presage 50 meters of water resistance. That surprised me. I think we should have been at 100 here, but I'll take it better than 30. Now let's return to some negatives. The bracelet. It's 20 millimeters and it tapers down to 18. We got an oyster style one piece and it's fixed via split pins. And the finish is basic brushing on top with high polish on the sides, just like that case. But unfortunately, we have a tiny clasp with only two micro adjustments with no half links. So dialing it in may be difficult. The inner portion of the clasp is milled with a stamped upper region twin button release. Okay, now we're gonna pivot back to some good news. That dial. Wow, what a color. Almost like a turquoise bluish gray that plays well with the light. And it comes to life with those circular grooves that creates that inner sector. And that inner sector is vertically brushed. And I love the fact that they went with the applied hour markers, which have a beautiful zigzag design. And some more good news. They went with an applied Seiko logo and a framed date window. Unfortunately, there is a lot of dust under this crystal, which is typical. They don't usually finish the watch at this price point. 
But when you throw away your macro lens, the looks, the visual appeal, it just looks the business. There's an expensive, classy vintage vibe, and I love it. The hands are traditional Seiko Dauphine, and we got a pool style seconds. There's white printing of Persage above the six and made in Japan below. The GMT hand seamlessly blends with this design and it's pure white, easy to read, and it jumps. The jumping GMT hand signifies that this is a collar GMT powered by Seiko's 4R34. The 4R34 is Seiko's workhorse movement that is cheap to service and replace if needed. It's a low B 21.6 VPH and it's got hacking and hand winding and it's an automatic. It's got plenty of power reserve at 41 hours. And now let's take a look at the rate. We got a powerful amplitude over 300 and plus nine, plus nine and the fourth and final round plus 11. That's in spec. So now you're thinking, what is this GMT going to cost me? Well, it retails for 625 USD. That's a little high for this bracelet with this finishing and the hard legs. But remember, Seiko's rarely sell at retail. This one is available at Kavar Jewelers. Email me if you want to discuss purchasing it. And if you liked this video, then guys, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more reviews like this one, then go ahead and click into one of the two I have for you on the right of your screen right now, and I will see you there.